Spit Studios in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. This is the Spit Sports Show. Holy moly, do we have a series on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. The Mavericks walk into Minnesota, take game one, steal home court advantage from the defending champion heartbreaker Timberwolves, who, after what was easily, in my opinion, Maybe the second biggest, but one of the biggest wins in franchise history, taking out the defending champs in game seven after being down 20 after halftime is up there in terms of Minnesota Timberwolves sports history. So Wolves fans, I know you guys have probably been riding quite the high for the past 20, 48 hours. And that unfortunately came to a screeching halt last night because Wolves fans, if I'm being totally honest, if I were you, I don't think I could feel worse about how that game went last night. And I want to start with the fact that it was a game one. Luka and the Mavericks are historically bad in game one scenarios. Luka with the Mavs in his career was one in six in game ones coming up to this point. And The reason why is because Luka, as LeBron sees, has a lot of LeBron in him. He is a master manipulator in the half-court offense. So when you are that cerebral and that knowledgeable of different defensive coverages, usually in game one, it's just kind of a feel-out game. See what kind of coverages they're going to try on you, how bad the help defenders are going to hedge. Just little nuances that you want to pick up on before you get into the expanded part of the series. This is what LeBron always did. He famously had a terrible career in game ones also. But just watching the game, Kyrie and Luka, Kyrie especially, found out very early, these perimeter defenders are really good for guarding certain archetypes. Kyrie and Luka are not those archetypes. Kyrie going off for 24 points in the first half after Anthony Edwards basically said, I've got Kyrie, I'm going to do my best to lock him up. It was pretty mundane trash talk, but clear trash talk nonetheless. And clearly Kyrie saw this and saw the coverage that the Timberwolves were playing on him and said, I'm going to get downhill, I'm going to get to my spot. And he was phenomenal yesterday. Um, They have great perimeter defenders, the Timberwolves do, for a Kevin Durant archetype, as we saw in the first round, or a Jason Tatum archetype. You know, a longer, a little bit more thin, just athletic, athletic small forward type. Whereas McDaniels and Edwards as your two perimeter defenders, and obviously Connolly sprinkled in there, usually playing the worst. McDaniels isn't strong enough yet to take that Luka shoulder bump in the lane, which he is just the best at because he's got so much, I don't want to say fat, but I'm going to say fat. He's got a big layer of body that when when he puts that shoulder into you, it's a lot like Jokic. You're going to lose some space on it unless you're a big, big, strong linebacker defender like Lou Dort who doesn't get moved that easily off of that spot, and it's going to make it difficult on Luka throughout the series. The Wolves don't have anybody like that. Jaden McDaniels is an unbelievable perimeter defender, but he is that is because he is long and athletic. That's not what Luka needs to slow down. That's what not, That's not what it takes for Luka to slow him down. It takes someone very strong to take Luka out of his rhythm, and McDaniels simply, he doesn't have enough... M- doesn't have enough bricks in his back pocket yet to stop Luca from consistently getting to the lane, putting him in jail behind him, taking a couple dribble moves and getting to his mid-range jumper. Now, Anthony Edwards, he probably could take that shoulder bump, but the four times he guarded Luca straight up that I can remember, he got cooked each and every time badly. One time Luca put him in the spin cycle, the other time Luca just backed him down into the easiest and one maybe of his career. He had a step back three over Ant and he got another good look in mid range, but he just missed it. But I don't think Ant can guard Luca straight up period. And even if he could, you can't let Ant get in foul trouble because if there's one thing Luca Doncic is 
just phenomenal at, it's drawing fouls. He's not quite Shea, but he's definitely on that top tier of foul drawers. You can't have Ant playing with four or five fouls in the fourth quarter. It just can't happen. Or you, you just don't have a chance of winning the series. That's your guy. And Kyrie, he can't be guarded by either of them. You're probably going to have to do something with Mike Connolly on switches just to slow him down because Mike Connolly, although he is older, he's still small enough and quick enough to where he can probably stay in front of Kyrie a little bit better than Anthony Edwards can because Anthony Edwards is a, a bit of a stiffer athlete than Mike Connolly is, obviously. Kyrie, 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 Kyrie. He was unbelievable yesterday. And just in general, like the perception shift for this one player is unlike anything I've ever seen in any sport. Like it got to the point where I couldn't listen to his press conferences anymore. I listen to as many press conferences as I can. It's my job. I want to get as many sound bites as I can. I want to get as much information as I can about what's going on within the team. I couldn't listen to his press conferences anymore because it seemed like every single day he was bringing up something new that had nothing to do with basketball and was simply a distraction for both the media and his teammates of what was the final goal. It was about vaccines one day, and then it was about this clearly, you know, a racist movie and then it was about you know putting sage all around the locker room and James Harden just looking at him like what the hell is going on and then we didn't need a coach and then he promoted himself to the coach and then he promoted himself to the general manager after he got swept by Boston if you remember that press conference nowadays since he got to the Mavericks and Mark Cuban talked about this when he brought Kyrie in he talked to obviously a lot of people who had been around him and the consistent theme was his teammates love him but it's the media that can really throw him off of his mental role and Mark Cuban said I can deal with the media and so far he has been just perfect with the Dallas media every single answer he gives is thoughtful it shows a real depth of maturity every time I watch his body language during a timeout or just on the court on defense when he's not guarding the ball, he's always engaged, always looking to, for his teammates. And it just seems like his teammates, by the way they talk about him, Luca and PJ Washington, and even these guys who haven't been around him for that long, he has been top tier this entire season. And the way my perception has changed of him, again, it's unlike anything I've ever seen in sports. He is now one of my favorite players in the NBA. And it's not just because he plays with, you know, one of my top two favorite players in the NBA. When the trade originally happened, I was excited about it because I thought it would be definitely a fun team to watch. But I didn't think they'd ha really have any championship aspirations. And it went from that to me picking them to win the championship before the playoffs. And all props to him. He's grown up. He's matured. He's just as, he's as good of a player as he's ever been, in my opinion. He's definitely as efficient as he's ever been. And goodness gracious me, congrats to him because he was unbelievable last night. And another reason why you should feel so bad as a Wolves fan, and I hate to keep piling on this, but Kyrie was great for a half. Luka was great for a half. But the Mavericks in general, they were awful shooting the basketball. They are the fifth team ever, the Mavericks are, to lose a three-point battle by 12 or more and win a playoff game. They lost the three-point shooting battle by 12. The, the Timberwolves shot 49 threes, which is the most they've shot all season. The Mavericks clearly came in with a game plan. We're not going to let Ant provide rim pressure. We're not going to let Cat try to post up and hit mid-ranges. We're going to force him outside. And we're just going to live with the results. And Jade McDaniels obviously went six for six to start the game. And then he started cooling off. And it seems like their plan worked. Now, do the, are the Mavs going to lose the three-point shooting contest by 12 next game or the game after that? Or game after, I doubt it. And with three-pointers being such a dramatic swing nowadays, it's got to be a little demoralizing that you dominated in that aspect so much. And yet you still lost but 
to their defense, I think it's the only reason they were in the game at all. I thought the Mavericks badly outplayed them in every aspect of the basketball game, except for knocking down those shots, those three pointers. And the Mavericks, like in total, they made they made six threes. They made six. Kyrie and Luca are very capable of making six by themselves. We've seen PJ Washington capable of making six plus by himself. Josh Green can get hot from three. I think Tim Hardaway Jr. is the best kept secret of this Dallas Mavericks team because he's just a microwave the way he can get hot so fast. The Wolves did a great job of throwing the Mavs off of their three-point rhythm, in my opinion, by taking them out of the corners. These guys are so used to taking wide open shots in the corner because Kyrie and Luca are so good at drop at drawing help defenders. But when the Wolves went into drop coverage, which is the center will drop and the perimeter defender will chase over the screen, it made it so that the guy, the wing defender, could stay on the corner because the center is in front of the guard. But that lob is going to be there all day because you have one guy trying to guard two. And the guy with the ball in his hands, Luke or Kyrie, are tremendous lob passers. By the way, that's another aspect, like smaller aspect, but something I want to acknowledge. Kyrie's passing, holy moly, it's gotten really, really good over these past couple years. Um, so the Mavs were able to dominate in the paint because of that. Now, good for the Wolves. They took him out of their three-point rhythm, no doubt about it, by getting rid of those corners. But the Mavs shot something like 78% from two. So, you know, you give a little to take a bit. I don't know. I, like, the risk-reward just didn't seem like it was worth it from a Minnesota defensive perspective. And I know, I'm sure they're going to make adjustments. And on the Wolves' side of this, everyone wants to talk about Anthony Edwards and how he seemed to just not even seem to. He was gassed by the end of the – by, I'm going to say, nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. It just didn't seem like he had any gas left. But if they want any chance of winning this series, Carl Anthony Towns needs to find a way to take advantage of the P.J. Washington matchup. P.J. Washington is 6'7", 220 pounds. Now, I love P.J. Washington. I have admittedly a bit of a man crush on him. I think he is an unbelievable attitude player for the playoffs. I think he's exactly who you want. I think he's a tenacious defender. I think the way he's locked in that corner three is going to be absolutely huge come these final rounds against Boston. He reminds me a little bit of P.J. Tucker, but probably a bit more athletic. But Carl Anthony Towns is seven foot 260. That should not be a favorable matchup for P.J. Washington on the post. But Carl Anthony Towns, he couldn't get his balance against him. He struggled to create separation with a bump, and he settled a lot for tough fadeaway jumpers and three-pointers, which weren't really falling for him. He didn't shoot the ball particularly well yesterday. And when you're not shooting the ball well as a big man, you need to be able to take advantage of the six, seven guy that's guarding you and go do a post-up move, which will also collapse the defense for Dallas more and set up your three-point shooting, which was your best element yesterday. I thought Cat had a really bad feel of the game yesterday. And he needs to be better if they want any chance of winning this series. And Anthony Edwards, he knows it. I know it. Every person who watched the game knows it. He needs to be way better too. But he is doing what most young, raw, athletic superstars do in their early career in the playoffs, unless your name's LeBron James. They're playing, when they play great, it's like they are prime them, the prime Jordan. You know, we got the Jordan comparisons for Anthony Edwards. I think Dwayne Wade's a bit of a better comparison, but whatever. But if they can't get into a rhythm early and, you know, your legs start to get a little heavier after two rounds, including a second round war against the Nuggets where you went to game seven, it's tough when you've never been through that situation before. It's tough to get through it. And I don't think Ant in general is going to have a great series, to be honest, because Derek Jones Jr. is probably the best veteran minimum signing I can remember. He is unbelievable on the perimeter. He's so long, and him and Luca have unbelievable chemistry on that lob pass because obviously he's one of the highest jumpers in the league. And his finishing ability has been really impressive too. He made a couple layups yesterday with his right hand. He's a left-handed player where I was like, 
maybe he's been taking some Kyrie Kyrie lessons, some uh, you know, he different spins and stuff like that. He had a couple really, really nice shots. If I again to wrap this up, if I was a Minnesota fan, I would be a little nervous. The Mavs, I thought outplayed them in every aspect of the game. Only thing that kept Minnesota in it was their three point shooting. And the Mavs are a better three point shooting team than they are. Not by much, but they are. So I think that'll even out after a while. I think the Mavs take in six, go to the finals against Boston, and that's going to be a heck of a series if it does end up happening. As always, thank you guys so much for listening. I want to know who do you guys have winning the series? What do you guys think needs to change for the Timberwolves if they are going to beat the Dallas Mavericks? Who do you guys have as the eventual NBA champion? Let me know in the comments below. I am small enough as to where I can read all comments, and I love doing so, so please leave some in the comment section. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. We just went over 250 subscribers. Big things happening here on the Spit Sports Show. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.